Pelleggi Technical Services, your computers and electronics concierge service. Well, it's been a couple days, so I decided to come out to the shed and just gather some more supplies. Um, I get out in uh, my shop in the house and start working on some stuff late at night, tinkering with different things, come up with different ideas, and then I run out of parts, and I have to either go out and buy them or order them online or come out to the shed and see what I have out here and stuff I pull out of things. So I've had these switches for the longest. They're just basic... AC switches with a uh, neon indicator light in here and I had originally one of the mounted one of the wires kind of was a little funky on me and I didn't like the way it came out so I decided to to take it out and I started messing with it because I wasn't really sure how they get wired up I, I know one of these gets hooked to the AC uh, line one gets hooked to the load and the other gets hooked to the neutral so that way when you flip the switch on the uh, light will glow or you can make it glow all the time depending on how you wire it and these are old I can't find a data switch on a, a data sheet on them anymore to, to see what the correct way to do it is so the one that went bad on me I tore apart and it seems that when you switch this switch back and forth it actually toggles a little slider back and forth between the middle con uh, contact and then the end contacts um, I've seen online where this would be your load, this would be your AC in, and this would be your neutral. But when you flip the switch the other way, it jumps those two out. I mean, I put a multimeter to it, and it doesn't, uh, you know, buzz with the continuity tester. Whereas this one here, when you flip it on, it, it turns on and off, obviously, because that's, that's right. But the light side of it, uh, unless I'm overanalyzing it and just not paying attention to what I'm doing... It's really kind of baffling to me. What I wanted it to do was is make it so when I plug in the power cord into the back of the power supply I'm building, it would make this light up, and then when you flip the switch on, the power supply would, you know, become active, obviously, and that would turn another little light on. But what I really wanted to do was put one of these switches in. I just couldn't find one. I had them around here. I didn't want to buy one. Well, I finally found it, and now obviously I have the big hole there. So I'm going to try to come up with some kind of a way to block that hole off and, you know, get this mounted here in its place. Um, also, while I'm out here, I need to get some kind of cord. Now, I'm not going to use this plug end of it. I'm just using the actual cord. And curiously enough, I have these old power supplies that I ripped out of something. And this is actually the part that went here to bring the power into it, but the terminal next to it is what went to a switch. So my thing is, is I need to connect the power cord from the back of the power supply to the uh, switch in the front, and then from that going back to the uh, actual power supply. And with the third wire, with this uh, neutral, it was making it a little harder because I had to have um, you know the doubled up wires. But now that I dug this out, I've looked at it and said, hmm, maybe I can just cut this board right here and use this in and out piece, mount that inside the project, and then that way what I can do is have um, a way to be able to disconnect that when I take that case apart. Because this is basically going right from the back of the unit to the front right to the back again. Um, I mean, I suppose just undoing the front screw is going to leave that loose, but it's always good to have another disconnection point. Um, it's also good to note that these connectors here are the same connectors that are actually on the other power supply that I'm working with. So it's kind of nice that that's a universal thing. So I might just desolder these and just have them as a spare. I'm not sure, but um, at any rate, this is, like I said, just a spare board that I took out of something. I'm just, I know it still works. It just provides a bunch of weird voltages. I don't know if you can see up here. Uh, it's a positive 5 volt. There's a couple of those rails. There's a ground set, a positive 9 volt, negative 9 volt. There's some AC voltage here, and then there's negative 25 volt at the end. So it's, uh, I'm not sure what this was from. I don't really remember now, but needless to say, it's a, uh, you know, a small little 
unit that I don't really have much of a use for until I know I think I think I do so it just stays in the shed here in a, in a bin and uh, it's actually going to come in the house because I might just desolder those and use them for something this is coming in and this I got to find another way to get this mounted this piece here I had marked the cut because where I have this in the front when this goes together this is mounted to the back of the case this comes in from the front this switch here was rubbing up against here and I couldn't get this to sit right and I need this uh, strip here so I was going to cut this with the Dremel and uh, you know re reseal it up like I had before I already took the tape off this but now that I'm going to use this switch it should be a lot better I wouldn't have to worry about that um, I just hope I can find another one of these nuts lying around if not well I guess one will do but it's better to have two so that way you're not putting stress on the case here so I'm gonna get the drill fired up oh I also have to point out that I got the holes mounted for the squared out or I should say the rectangular um, meters that I'm gonna pop in here and uh, you know, looking at this, I might just put the switch over here in the end. I got to see. We'll just maybe seal that up. This was kind of big to put over here. So maybe I'll put this over here. Well, with that, I'm going to cut the camera. We'll come back later when I got some more progress to this. Well, I got all the holes cut here. You can see I put some duct tape over the original switch hole that I made. It's kind of ugly, but it does, you know, serve a purpose right now that's probably where I'll put some kind of a label or something like that or um, I still haven't figured out exactly what I'm gonna do with that yet I might just get a plug and plug it we'll, we'll see but these are the holes that I have to square off with the nibbler and mount the um, voltmeters in and then over here in the end this is the negative 12 volt supply and this is gonna be the ground I have to still get those I still have to get two of these meters they are on their way I was supposed to have them Thursday. Last time this happened, uh, the week before, it said I was going to have them Thursday. I ended up getting them Friday. This is the same place, the same situation, the whole nine yards, except for it hasn't moved according to the tracking. So, uh, yeah, I'm a little skeptical about that. Maybe we'll get it tomorrow. We'll, we'll see. But all these holes are drilled. I'll, I'll point out, I have a piece of wood behind here with the slit. That's because these um, LED bezels here I need to fit into that so this can sit flush when I go to drill this so it's just something I kind of rigged up real quick but yeah that's all for now for this I gotta go inside with this video and I'm gonna take a break for dinner and when I come back to it I'll have these holes squared out I just want to give a little update on what I've got going on so far you can see over here I've got the holes ready to go I actually got one of the meters in place uh, loosely because I have to still drill the holes out and figure how I'm going to mount it but I wanted to see how this would work I'll actually uh, hook this up in just a second here the leads are just connected on the back with uh, a little bolt and then eventually I'm going to have this connected to the mains on the power supply here the main you know power connection and then that way you'll be able to find out what the actual voltage is at that particular point and it's going to be 12 volt, 5 volt, and 3.3 volt at the end I'm not sure which color I'm going to put where but they all are different colors to kind of make it a little more visual this is the uh, on and off switch for the actual power supply portion itself and then this is the mains input um, switch and the way this is going to be is when this is on the USB port here and the power light here are all on and I'm gonna me maybe draw some kind of a line in between this and you know I'm gonna try to make some kind of graphics for this when this is done I think I've been thinking about that tonight also the USB connection I was using basically uh, was just this piece here and what this originally was was one of these guys and this is a PCI slot cover with two USB ports mounted to it. If you follow the wire down to the end, you'll see the piece that connects to the motherboard. And I just basically cut this off, soldered longer leads onto the red and black connectors. Uh, the white and the green are for the data. You can just omit those because you're not going to be able to use them. And uh, on the other one, I actually cut these uh, 
rubber pieces off originally and uh, it worked well but I'm going to go back to the original idea of just having these mounted with screws and actually this becomes useful because if you cut the top off over here you can lay this down flat and you can use this as a template now one of the other things I was thinking about is that since this doesn't put out the highest uh, amperage on that standby 5 volt tap I was I might put another slit up here and put a secondary USB off of these two uh, terminals and that will give you a uh, you know a, another place to plug a USB device into but that's also going to be a higher you know higher output and I, I, I might current limit it I gotta figure out how to do that maybe some kind of a resistor or maybe a, a, an LM317 in current uh, limiting mode or I, I gotta figure that one out and then I have to figure out how I'm gonna get that mounted I'm just gonna use this like a, like a template I'm gonna place it over it mount the hole uh, mark the holes drill that out that should still fit I gotta see how that's gonna clear with the switch next to it here but let me uh, put the camera down for a second. I'll set this up. I have my power supply off in the corner. You can see the leads going around back over there. And I have this hooked up to, I think, the 5 volt or the 12 volt. Not, don't really remember. But I have it hooked up to one of the taps. And we'll, I'll connect it to the back here and we can see. And I'll hook the meter up real quick, the actual, my fluke meter, and see if it's accurate. This is basically what the end result's going to look like. You can see it's just kind of just sitting there flapping in the wind right now, but uh, I'm not sure if I want to have this sticking out or if I want to have it flush. I think flush is the best way. I've been toying around with that one too. I kind of think that's a really cool uh, uh, visual aid too. And let's just see if it's accurate. Now, like I said, the 5 volt one's actually going to be in the middle. But that's just where I stuck it because actually I think I want the yellow one here. Because usually on these uh, power supplies, the yellow um, connection, the yellow wires are the 12 volt power. They use that, they use red for 5 volt, and they use orange for 3.3 volt. But there's no orange one, so I have green coming instead. But let's see, I have my fluke meter over here. Let's turn this on connect these guys Let's see if I could do this one-handed of course these are non fluke ends on here I just got these from Radio Shack oh yeah let me put the camera down and we can see here that it's fairly close close enough for me I'm not this isn't a precision instrument you know this is just something I'm going to set up on my desk to be a you know desktop power supply of sorts um, ultimately I'm going to have a, a nice you know bench top supply at some point with a you know current limit and a voltage limit set up in it that's you know adjustable and the whole nine but for now this is going to do for my needs Here's a closer look at that older USB port. Like I said, I did cut the ears off of it, but what I did it, uh, originally was I soldered on new wires at the end of this to make this longer, because this lead is only you know so long, and uh, twisted the wires, crimped up some eyelets on here as well as soldered them on, and then put some heat shrink around there, and everything down here is also heat shrink. You can see this little bump right here. These are just the little leads from the white and green wires for the data connection. And I just have them tucked inside the heat shrinking. And then here's the new one I made up. Now I did leave the ears on, but I had to kind of flatten it off on the one side here. Because, uh, actually on both sides, because it wouldn't fit exactly the way I wanted it to. I did the same crimp and solder and heat shrink concept here except this time when I put the first piece on here and then I soldered on the ends I slid two small pieces of heat shrink over the ends put that together and then slid another piece over the top of everything else so it's like 
triple triple heat shrink in places and that's important because that's really thin wire inside of this and uh, I didn't necessarily do it as well on this side it's still a good job but I have uh, longer pieces of heat shrink this time so I'm able to do this now also I made the wire just a little bit longer because there's room in this box for the wiring I still may go ahead and put another port up here I have decided that I still have to figure out how I'm going to do the current limiter because I do only want it to put out so much unless I can get a bank of USBs and then I can do a you know higher current obviously but alas this one's all set now I just have to go ahead and just mark the holes out I don't have uh, access to my drill press right now because it's dark outside and it's uh, past uh, quiet time hours in my park here I live in so I can't actually go out there and fire it up anyway plus it's a little chilly out I'm gonna do that tomorrow or I may just bust out the hand drill which I have inside here and just do it with the uh, cordless drill but it's a little more accurate doing on the drill press plus I feel a little more confident with my uh, drilling with that machine so I may just leave it for that but I gotta go online and see if I can figure out how I'm gonna do the current limiter and uh, that'll be the next step